us that if we couldn't understand the show, you were going to drop our call. So, I mean, you should have said the same to him, which, which you did. Yeah, she came in. She came in just in time. I came in once and told him, I said, hey, man, let's let other people talk, you know? I mean, and then it didn't change. It went right back to the same thing, you know? So, I don't know. Who cares? Alpha dog. What? I said, what's up, alpha dog? Where'd he go? got done taking a piss, brother. Oh, my goodness. TMI. <laughs> TMI. Exactly. Mr. Midnight Movie. Well, uh, I, I wanted to listen to one more audio from this guy. It's called, Are We in the Last Days? Okay? I think a lot of people have this question on their minds. Are we uh, uh, in the last days? I don't think people... Let's see what this guy has to say, because he does preach right off the Bible. Let's see what he says about, are we in the last days, shall we? Look up three blood moons, too. Three blood moons. Okay. That'll go along with your what you're about to play. All right. Everyone wants to know what the future holds. With world trends and conditions growing more grim, what lies ahead for all nations has become the very greatest concern today. Millions are searching, wondering about the course of daily events. Jesus' disciples ask him about the end of the world, meaning the age. The prophet Daniel spoke of the time of the end. The apostle Peter foretold, there shall come in the last days scoffers. And the Apostle Paul warned, in the last days, perilous times shall come. This phrase makes the subject more serious. Has this final interval in world history arrived? Can you be sure? Many sense or even firmly believe that we are in the last days. We hear from them daily. But these are rarely sought to prove this. They should know whether we are, and so should you. You can know. In fact, God expects you to. The World to Come The Restored Church of God presents David C. Pack Author of 80 Books and Booklets Editor-in-Chief of The Real Truth Magazine Read by countless and growing numbers in every nation and territory of the world In a violent age, full of bad news Answering life's greatest questions straight from the Bible and announcing the wonderful good news of the world to come. And now, David C. Pack. It has become painfully obvious that this world is in terrible trouble. Let's pull back and look at the big picture. Mankind is overwhelmed with every kind of trouble, evil, and ill. War, terrorism, violence of every kind, famine, disease, pollution, overpopulation, political upheaval, religious confusion, and tremendous economic turmoil and decline that threatens to make the Great Depression look like child's play. Then there are the hundreds of millions who live in abject poverty, ignorance, and oppression. Now add rampant and worsening immorality and perversion in every Western nation and growing hatred, unrest, and the never-ending cycle of war in the Middle East and deteriorating conditions throughout Africa and frightening weather patterns across many parts of the world and devastating fires, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, and floods occurring with greater frequency and intensity and headlines screaming of murder, rape, robbery, and crimes of every kind. These mushrooming problems now threaten all nations. Is all of this really only a little temporary worsening of what is otherwise business as usual for planet Earth? Many, and much louder, are the voices that say time is running out to solve the really big problems facing the world. More and more world leaders are expressing pessimism about the rise of troubles within and between nations. So are educators, military planners, sociologists, and scientists. Yet, because this is also an age of religious sundowners and doomsayers, most will not pay real, serious attention. How long until Jesus Christ returns? For those who believe He will, no question is bigger. But there are other questions, some big, that must be answered first. This broadcast will look at perhaps the second biggest question. 
The Bible speaks of the period preceding Jesus' return as the last days, the time of the end, the end of the age, the end of these things, and the end of the days, and of a time when the course of human history, as we know it, Daniel wrote, shall be finished. Of course, many professing Christians do not believe in a literal return to earth by Christ. Of those who do, most think that it could be decades or even hundreds of years away. Some believe it could be a thousand years away. Others feel time may be short, but see no way to know. What do you believe? The original apostles thought for a time that Jesus would return in their lifetimes. Paul spoke of the resurrection of the dead at Christ's second coming, and twice used the word we, which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, because he expected to still be alive when this happened. Paul later came to realize that he had misunderstood the timing of specific events that must precede Christ's return. In fact, he had to warn of those who would deceive others about when this would occur. He wrote about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and that brethren should be careful to let no man deceive you by any means. Could you be deceived? So then have we entered the last days. Do you and I live at the time of the end? If so, how can you know for sure? Jesus told his disciples, I will come again. Forty days later, as he was ascending to heaven, two angels added, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Matthew records Christ's words. For as the lightning comes, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Seven times just in this chapter, Jesus spoke of his coming again, and the need to watch for key events, trends, and conditions preceding it. Is the world nearing Christ's return? Again, can we know? Make no mistake, the Bible is plain about the return of Jesus Christ. Many verses speak of his second coming to earth. It will happen, and it does not hinge on the opinions of men, yours or mine. But in the period leading to this climactic event, many things are foretold to happen. Some, in fact most of them, catastrophic. Can you afford to be in the dark? The idea of the end of the world has been a subject of speculation, ridicule, discussion, fascination, and fancy for almost 2,000 years. Sadly, most do not realize how much the Bible shows can be known about this time. In Matthew 24, the disciples asked Jesus, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? After a detailed answer, Jesus added, but of that day and hour knows no man. What happened? You know what happened yeah. to the audio? Um, why did it quit? Oh, Let me try to find it. Oh, I think my. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I think my internet just messed up. Hold on. I can't. My internet's locked up. I might be losing the call. See, my son's in here talking about it. Well, we was talking about, um, what about Fukushima? That's destroying the whole world. And then there's there's a lot of wars and rumors of wars. And there's a lot of distress in a lot of nations, like he, the guy was just saying. Don't you agree, Alpha Dog? Loud radio? I'm here. You, yeah, I do. What do you agree with? I mean, Fukushima. Fukushima, Fukushima. I mean, it's too much of a coincidence. You know what I mean? It's it's. Um, look up wormwood in the Bible. Wormwood is is a bad water, and Fukushima is polluting the Pacific Ocean, killing animals, mutating them. I mean, and it's in people's drinking water now and shit. There's there's surfers losing their hair in California. There's there's people around here talking about a lot of their um, their glands in their throat being swollen. Have you ever heard about that in any of your guys' areas? Not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, well, not really. I not haven't so heard much. of that. Uh, no. I know there's been a lot of sickness though. 
This is like swelling, like there's something swollen in their neck, like their glands. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. But I I don't have it personally, nor have I known anybody personally that's had that happen. Yeah. Put it that way. You know, that my, my, my oldest son, we, we, we picked him up from work today, and he was kind of saying things some about uh, his glands were feeling swollen. Yeah, like almost like you have a stiff neck a little bit, like you can't turn your neck to the right or the left a little bit. Yeah, I was talking about that today. Because that that's that's supposed to be like the first thing that – like radiation hits is your thyroid. That's why you're supposed to take that. Uh, is it iodine? I don't know. Okay. If I answer the call from the Jew, it's going to put you guys on hold. So I don't know what to do. Hang on just a second. Jew, I answered your call, but it put the other call on hold. I don't know why. I don't know either. Um, let me try to add you to the call. So hang up. Okay. Let me go back to them. Um, That's I'm back. Let me try to add. The Jew wants to come in. He's got something to say. Let me try to add him in. I, I turned off a lot of my stuff on the computer. Maybe that'll help my thing settle down. Okay. Let's see. His name is... Um, the Jew. I can't add him to the call. I'm just going to cry. Do y'all want to add him? Well, no, it says added the Jew to the conversation. Okay. No, you're added. So you, all you have to do is just pick up the call, Jew. Yeah, someone's added. Yeah, I added him. It says, do you see where it says Debbie added the Jew to the conversation? You're added. So all he has to do is just what Chris did, just pick up the call, and there he comes. Oh, I think that fixed it. I was joined to another call. Not that I was on it, but I was joined to it. Psychotic flypaper has struck again today. Just when you thought it was safe to go out. Okay, why do you say that? You ready for my story? Okay. It's fresh. Comes in two parts. I took my son to karate today, as I do every day in the afternoon. Various times, sometimes changes, but it's in the late afternoon. I have an hour and a half to myself. I go to Starbucks. I drink uh, as many drinks as I possibly can. I have come to a conclusion from what happened today that born again Christians have no sense of humor. And I would like somebody to explain to me why. Back to my story. So I order my coffee, and I have a little back and forth with uh, two. Two is this very cute Vietnamese woman who's also a EMT, gorgeous in her uniform. Just looks so so nice, you know. Take me back to Asia. And uh, I noticed one of the, uh, the baristas, we'll call him. Uh, Greg has changed his name to Gregory. I notice things like that. You know, name tag, but I notice he changed his name to Gregory for Greg. So I asked him about it. I didn't really think that much of it, and I didn't have a very long conversation. I go sit down, drink my coffee. I'm sitting in, uh, there was quite a few people there. And our friend, my friend Gregory, the barista, starts uh, walking towards me. But you can tell that he's bothered. He's walking sideways, and he looks very unsure of himself, and he's sort of sweating a little bit. He comes up to me, and he says, um, he doesn't like something, something or other I'm doing. I don't know what it was. And I said to him, I said, well, what specifically is the problem? And he couldn't articulate it. He was all over the place. And so I said to him, I said, do you realize I'm on the phone? I was on the phone. I was talking to my ex-girlfriend. I said, you realize I'm on the phone. He says, oh, 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 oh I, 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 I have to take care. I have to take care of this now. Um, um, you just can't do things. It's disruptive, something or other. It's a fucking Starbucks. She <laughs> says, I said to him, oh, look, let me see if I understand this correctly. And I hung up on, on my ex-girlfriend, and I said to him, um, why are you discussing this back here with all these people? I said, I really need to teach you something. I said, so I said, if you want to continue this discussion, or I'm happy to do it, come outside with me and we'll continue the discussion. And I grabbed my coffee cup and I got up to go walk outside. And I was going to teach him uh, something I learned a long time ago. It's called praise in public, criticize in private. And it doesn't necessarily always work on BTR or Spreaker, but in real life, it ought to work that way. You've heard that before, right? It's a military t uh, uh sort of um, term, praise in public, criticize in private. He doesn't follow me outside. 
he doubles back and goes and runs and hides behind the uh, cash register or something. And I walked over and I said, what's your problem? I said, did you want to have a discussion or not? And he's sort of looking at me and just mouthing words. I have no idea.